Well, it's been a lot more than three months since my last custom antivirus evasion tool. Don't get me wrong, Buy Me Builder was fun to build, but it had a lot of issues. The encoder was only functional with one operating system, the tool failed to handle large shellcode payloads like Sliver C2, and the technical debt of broken features or signature by Windows Defender. My solution was porting the whole project from Bash into Python, suggested by my friends who also gave me additional advice for improving the tool. If you are watching, I greatly appreciate your feedback. After some initial planning with pseudocode, the first problem was how to handle the long list of command line arguments between all the different options. My solution was to split Byte Me Builder version 1 into two different tools. Byte Me Builder Basics 2, that handles basic payloads, and Inchworm Obfuscator, that handles more complex payloads like obfuscating shellcode, making each tool clear to use and hopefully have less confusing argument names. Starting off with Byte Me Builder Basics 2, which is still written in Bash and shares most of the logic from Byte Me Builder 1 that we can see in the sub help menu filtering out with the examples and by me builder with the dash t flag to check to make sure all the tools are installed. The main update to this tool is the addition of web-based payloads. To demonstrate basic payload creation, I'm going to start with a simple Windows reverse shell. Showing off the web-based payloads, I'm going to generate a universal PHP reverse shell. However, in this case, instead of using the IP address for the listening L host, I'm going to use the interface of LO, which will just supply localhost, because I'm just going to show it off on my local machine. With both files being created, I'm going to start with the PHP reverse shell. First, we need to create a PHP web server to simulate uploading it to a Windows or Linux machine. Next, I'm going to listen for my reverse shell connection. And then finally, we're going to curl our local host. In this case, it's going to be on port 8000 and then test.php. As we can see, it forks the connection and we get a shell. Moving on to the Windows Reverse Shell, let's clean this up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is just do a Python web server. After I clean up all the PHP commands. Perfect. And then like before, listen on 443. Going into my Windows machine. We're going to pull up CMD, go into redemo, and then of course pull up Defender to show that it is running. Make this a little bit bigger. Put this on the side, like so. And then we'll use our download script download raptor.exe. We got our file. Windows Defender does not complain. We run Raptor and we get our virtual connection. Moving on to the next tool, Inchworm Obfuscator, which at the moment contains staged and unstaged payloads, custom command and control framework payloads, and web based payloads, which is currently a work in progress. Obfuscation is handled in two different ways. First by mixins. Originally mixins were obfuscation not based on traditional encryption. However, mixins are now defined as any shellcode obfuscation where the decryption stub is not added to the final shellcode. And by encryption, any shellcode encryption includes the decryption stub within the whole shellcode byte array without any additional programming logic. Encryption can be used with any mixin where the shellcode will be first encrypted and then mixed like it was with Byte Me Builder 1. To help demonstrate this, I'm going to create a simple MZ Venom payload, but in two different formats, raw and C-sharp. Reverse TCP. Format C-sharp as sharp.cs. And then create one as raw, name it win.bin. 
before obfuscating, the two ways I can process the shellcode is either with the G flag with our win.bin file and then n for no compile and then our format. Our format will be how the shellcode will be formatted into that language, in this case in C sharp format. However, if I just do C, now it will be in C format. Going back to C sharp, we can also obfuscate with the dash E flag for encryption or with our mixin, like mixin zero, which will just flip the byte array backwards, for example, as we can see by the zero XFC being at the end of our shellcode. Of course, we can always mix them together as seen here, where it's also encrypted and flipped backwards. Another nice touch is we can also change the loader names to Chad Rocks and or the byte string to something like rice man rocks or anything else we feel like would help us get past signature detection. Using the same Embus of Venom reverse shell payload from the previous demo, I will create an executable with interim obfuscator or weapon file. So sharp, our mixin four, encoder one, runner file one, and dash o as rager.exe. I do not need to supply the format because it will be processed by the file extension of the payload I selected. Now all that's left to do is listen on netcat for listening port and then host our payload. Going back into the Windows machine, we can see Windows Defender is running. If I go into PowerShell and type echo invoke mimikatz, we can see Defender is running. We'll run the same downloader script as before. And as we can see, it is not flagged by Defender. Running the executable, nothing is getting detected. Going back into our terminal by moving this window away, we have a session. Continuing on with Inchworm Obfuscator for this part of the demonstration. To make my life a little bit easier, I have some setup scripts for the section on custom command and control framework payloads and showing that Inchworm Obfuscator can support processing large shellcode payloads. In this case, we have a setup script for Sliver and we have one for MSF console. Starting with Sliver, we're going to go into Sliver server like in the previous video, enable multiplayer, and then in the bottom, do sliver client and then pipe in with a redirection our sliver setup script which will create our listener create a profile set up our stage listener and generate a default mtls payload in the raw format all right perfect first handling the raw shellcode payload inch from obfuscator dash g for our raw payload and then we'll just do leftovers as a funny string, encoder 2, runner 1, and then mix in 6. We'll output it as obfuscated sliv.exe. And as we can see, even though that if we look at the size of all of the files, our bin file is 15 megabytes and it's still compiled. Next, I will create a custom stager that will go with the one we set up and our Silver Setup script, where we set our stage listener to HTTP. Inchworm 1, our Y for our yoink path, which will just be our local host with our port, and then whatever junk.wolf. This could be anything as custom HTTP stager.exe. All right, we have both of our files. I'll listen on 80. And in this case, I'm going to use a Windows 11 machine instead of the previous demo, which used a Windows 10 machine. To show Windows Defender is running, I'm going to go into PowerShell, do the simple echo invoke mimikatz, and we can see that it's been blocked by your antivirus software. Now to grab our files. Sliv.exe, Sliv.exe. 
this will be the first time I put it against Windows 11's version of Windows Defender, so let's see how it fares. And then grab custom HTTP stager.exe. All right, we have both our files. I'm going to create another CMD prompt because one of them will hang the window. Go into desktop, running our obfuscated sliver. We can see Windows Defender does catch it, unfortunately. And let's test our custom HTTP, which will unfortunately close our window. Going back to the terminal, we can see that we lost our session from our obfuscated full payload, but in this case with our custom HTTP stager, we get a session back. Moving out of Sliver into our Metasploit test. So I'm going to kill all the jobs real quick and then kill our session before closing out of Sliver. Now with our MSF script, MSF, not Venom, MSF console dash R MSF script to create our listener with our listener running under jobs. Now to create a custom interpreter reverse TCP payload. So C6 ETH0 our port and then O as M TCP stager dot exe. Great. Copy this. Go back into Windows, our PowerShell, IWR, HTTP, put in our IP address, grab this. It's, I'm not listening, silly me. Go back into Windows, grab our file. Windows hasn't complained yet, run the file. Windows still hasn't complained. And because it's forking it into a different process, as you can see, it will try to give us a session. It won't work because it's migrating. So the session will die. And then once it's done migrating, we'll get a second session. So if I do sessions, we have a session. If I do session two, and then get UID, it seems that it works perfectly fine. Before ending the video, I would like to first cover the difference between Inchworm Obfuscator and how Byme Builder have encoded their shellcode. In Byme Builder 1, if we look at our demo script, how it works is we use bash to encode our shellcode, and then we store our encoded shellcode array, in this case, Zor encoded, into our assembly using NASM to compile it to a cough object link our cough object into a valid executable and then extract all the bytes with a for loop using the object dump command. This works, however, it is unable to process large shellcode arrays and errors. The way it's done in Inchworm Obfuscator is with either Keystone Engine or Pwn Tools. The main difference with assembling the encoder in Python compared to using NASM is that the assembly that may be compatible with NASM might not be compatible with Python tooling. If I look at this file, this one is using Keystone Engine. The encoder looks the same. However, when we jump to the assembly, we can see that some components are missing, such as the DB part of the encoded shellcode. If we go back into the original one, we can see that we're storing our shellcode array as encoded shellcode, colon db, and then our shellcode bytes. That we can see in our 64 encoded assembly. That is not the case when we're using 
Keystone Engine. Instead, we assemble our assembly, where we append the encoded shellcode to the assembly called encoding to create our final payload, and then print our shellcode. Additionally, the assembly also works with Pwn tools if you are choosing to assemble your shellcode with that instead of Keystone Engine, which will look a little bit different, but the same assembly still works. Just keep that in mind when you are coding your encoder in Python. To further demonstrate this, I'm going to create a very basic reverse shell with MSF Venom. Now with our shellcode created, I will replace this line with our payload. Save I red team. Take our final shellcode. Copy it. Put it into our create fiber file. Copy the compile line, and then do create fiber, this all looks fine, compile it, now to listen, and host our file. Going back into Windows, make it a little bit bigger, go into redemo, download, file dot file.bat.exe I mean we have our file Windows Defender has not complained even though it is running now if we run file if we go back to our terminal we can see we have a shell and that concludes this video. Thank you all for watching. I was going to add a section for testing my tool and showing it off versus more advanced antivirus solutions like Bitdefender, but I basically got my butt kicked and everything was signatured to some degree. In the future, I want to improve the tool with additional switches to help obfuscate against EDR solutions and more advanced antivirus solutions. In preparations for CTFs that include more difficult security measures, in addition to adding different payload functionality, like lateral movement payloads, I hope to see you on the next one. Take care and have a great day.